Mindset Reset Traders, a stress-free, free cash Wednesday. I made some notes and um, a lot of great questions. This is an interesting week. It's a non-farm payrolls week. We had uh, a whole plethora of major red news. Not only, you know, we had uh, non-farm ADP, we had Jolts, we had Powell at uh, 10, 10.30. And those three together are high impact. Uh, traditionally, anything can happen on any day with major red news. In the past, I've seen ADP move the market 300 pips on gold. Gold is overextended, already off my list. No uh, first bar type of trade. Uh, typically, as I talked about earlier in the week, first bar will, will coincide usually with a Monday, Tuesday, or even a Wednesday, three-day setup when the market has coiled and has not had a range expansion. So remember, opening range, Monday opening range, Tuesday, day two expands the range. If we don't see that, we can see a Monday, Tuesday box and, and we can get the range expansion on a Wednesday. We can see a first bar type of activity or first bounce on occasion. Uh, and and often on the re the reverse side of the week, the back side of the week, we'll, we'll see the first bounce type of opportunity on major red news in the closing range of the week. Not always, not a exact rule of thumb, but typically the range expansion can, can come off of a first bar where we trap three levels, either down low or up high. So gold was off my list. It was a distended market. And also recognizing that the type of market conditions that gold has put out did not present anything. Uh, you know, I'm not looking to short gold. We've had three massive days of movement. Uh, and so think about it this way. If you're going to short gold or looking to short counter trend gold, I should say, not short it because you're just counter trending, a massive move driven by other time frame traders at the beginning of the month. And so nothing there. Indexes are in what's called a short covering type of day. So if you want to read more about that, read Dalton's book, short covering. We saw a massive dump down yesterday that closed right at the end of the day, the last hour, uh, coming back to get the majority of the U.S. session traders that were in after major red news. And then the, the, as the days traded, it's auctioned higher slowly throughout the day. Gave London traders an excellent question from a trader regarding uh, the Russell and I believe the NASDAQ, all of them moved up off of closing price at the Open of London. And as I said to the trader, um, when I lived in Perth, I would look at the U.S. indexes. But those are the golden opportunities. That's a short covering day, so you're virtually going to be in the money right away. That's the type of day you want to be trading it on. Or a long liquidation day where they're going to re reverse off of London against longs. Uh, and what that is, is shorts rolling out of their positions. Uh, and you'll notice it went right back to where major red news started that move down on all three indexes. So again, the market opens right back where it started on major red news on uh, Tuesday. So again, we're inside. And uh, as I as I said in my post, yes, I know there's volatility. There's pumping dumps and dumping pumps, nailing bales. Today, those conditions, especially on the indexes, are not what I want to be trading. Uh I, I mentioned this several times. When we get into this type of week, a non-farm payrolls week, I've learned this from experience. And a lot of traders already tuned into this because they're more focused on Forex pairs. But when we have a lot of major red news on the calendar, the cross rates can tend to give us easy trade, day, day three, three session setups for easy free cash. Zero stress. And we had that opportunity, number one, we had it in Asia after the Aussie dollar release at 7.30 p.m. New York time. So Euro Oz, Pound Oz, both gave easy Asian session parabolic trades. Now, uh, we're on day three, day one, day two. Day three broke down in Asia after the news underneath of Monday's closing price. Now, as I mentioned one trader, I mistakenly called Euro Oz a uh, first red day yesterday, and it wasn't. But it had the characteristics of a first red day trade. We've broken down on the news. Asia created the high and low of the day. Asia created the high and the low of the day. On the Euro Oz, it broke the previous day's low of day. They've both pumped up in London and coiled into the open of the U.S. session. Uh, 8.15 a.m. ADP, a little engulfment. Sideways coil uh, inside the Universal EMA for an easy collapse. Now that market has continued to stay dropping. So we had major red news and, and those, those cross rates have virtually been unaffected. 
We had first bar opportunities on the Canadian dollar after the BOC rate release. But again, you've got to time the fact that you you either want to be ma the majority of that position out. I know there are traders who are want to hold through the news. And as I put on my post, realistically, if you put size onto any of those trades, would you hold on to stuff? Or would you actually take all this, the scalps and you know moves off the highs and the, and the lows and in gaps and all these other things with size, would you really do that? And that's the way that I look at the setups is that if you're trading these setups, they're sizable, they're scalable, they're reproducible. There's gonna be days where you're just gonna be in and out of the market and nail and bail, and that size is relevant to your, your trading account. But, but in terms of a mindset perspective, you know, today to me, today is, 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 is a FAFO day, but I also want you to think about Wednesday now, that those days are setting up as new day ones. And so often when we have a week, we've talked about on a non-farm payrolls week, we can have a four day type of template. And that reset day is our, our new day one and it has a lot of day one characteristics of an opening range. So tomorrow we could see a large day tomorrow on several instruments and then non-farm payrolls consolidate and an explosive move possibly as typically as we will see it. But uh, Thursday day two, could offer some fantastic opportunities on all the instruments tomorrow. We'll have, see how they set up. But today is typical of that. So again, just differentiating volatility versus an actual trading setup. So traders are scalping moves in gold today and saying, you know, I shorted it here and bought it there. And realistically, like, would you ever put size on that? Because that, to me, there was no setups there. Zero. Absolutely nothing that was playbook in terms of being other driven by other time frame traders. That that to me would have been me going to the market to try and get pips. And this is the type of day as we've witnessed on gold uh, for inexperienced traders or traders who are, you know, just trying to catch some volatility. You can blow your account out on the wrong day. So the news calendar on on these types of weeks. We well, we know right at the start of the week. I've I've said this. We're heading into a non-farm payrolls Friday. Use the calendar in these other sessions for opportunities, front side, back side, Aussie dollar crosses, New Zealand crosses. The yen gave a, a beautiful day three parabolic uh, into the Europe Open. 50 pips, zero stress, zero stress. So that's the thing I want you to think about is how, how complicated do you want your trades to be? Day one, day two, day three, parabolic moves. We had... Uh, reversals on day three, starting in Asia, and then the reversal. So go back and look at the Euro Oz Pound Oz pump day. Euro Oz extends the range, breaks down on day three, major red news, parabolic. That creates the range. They pump it up into closing price from Monday and into to Tuesday's closing price for the collapse and the break back down through, which is zero stress. Reversal trades, trend trades, gold going parabolic. After major red news later, a big coil trapping shorts up high. Retail loves to counter trend. <laughs> so, uh, but oil, we had crude oil inventories and we had an inside day on Monday. Yesterday we saw that uh, choppy volatile bottom, higher high. That's the template for the pump and dump, which virtually started right off of closing price in the Asian session. Tony, great trade. Uh, and that those are hard to trade sometimes later as the day progresses where the market's moving higher and higher and we're at the high of the day, it pops on the news to work its way back up to the inside, high of the inside day. Now, again, for me, buying up high on that type of day is not really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the parabolic coil. Uh, that's a long extended coil. Those are hard to trade. So again, I'm looking for the easier template on the day. But the cross rate pairs, I, I, you know, I've several times in the past, I've gone back and looked at days where I've, I've traded gold or I've traded a, a currency pair or something on a payrolls week. And then I, I, I realize how simple some of the other setups are. If you take the time and understand when we've got a block of major red news on the U.S. calendar that's high impact, the majority of the impact will be against U.S. dollar cross pairs. So it, it pays to go back and look at the major pairs again, Eurocad, uh, Poundcad. So again, after first bar, if I'd be more inclined to take one of the cross rate pairs in, in the sense that they all moved similar distance, but the US dollar cross, Canadian dollar cross, with major red news at 10 a.m., 
you got to be out of that market. Whereas if you've peeled some off, you may be more inclined or more confident to leave a trailer for that extra 20 pip move that came after the major red news. 40 pips. Um, so heading into Friday, we again, we could see tomorrow to be a very uh, opportunistic type of day, depending on, on how they set up three session setups heading into non-farm payrolls. Uh, because today resetting as a day one, right? Day one, day two, day three, we could see a range expansion tomorrow on some pairs. Again, we've seen some uh, coiled markets on some of the major pairs. We've seen ex range expansions. Uh, it could be a very interesting non-farm payrolls Friday. So in closing, hard habit for traders to break is to feel like they got to trade something every single day. Think about what's scalable. It's not about going to the market every day to make a living. And, you know, for some people, they just want to replace their income. But but you'll have a, a lot better opportunity to do that if you learn where scalable setups are and then finding them on the day itself, using the calendar to your advantage. Again, major red news, Aussie dollar on a non-farm payrolls week. That was an easy trade last night. Easy trade. No stress, zero stress, 50 pips, zero heat. After the news, so after the news, it opens bef uh, half an hour later, you know, it was easy. There's no heat. So use the calendar, understand front side, back side. And when we have a week where we have major US dollar high impact news, potentially high impact news, use those to your advantage. So sit on your hands, understand what scalable setups are. If you FAFO, I, you know, people keep asking, what is FAFO? What is FAFO? Well, if you want to find out, <laughs> go in and start fooling around for lack of a better term. So sitting on your hands today, again, just not even interested in any of that stuff. Uh, because that are, from experience, I already know, yes, you can trade it. But, but do you really want to be putting yourself into low quality uh, situation or a, or a high stress situation? Or if you do, nail and bail, take the money and run. Or is there an easier higher probability slash possibility scalable setup for putting a bit more size on that almost has a 90-10 weight in your favor. So good job traders and congratulations to the traders who didn't trade uh, because they recognize the potential dangers that were lurking today. And uh, you know, again, there's some trades that just kept grinding away and those are hard to trade. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, being out of the market, as I said before, and sitting on my hands watching and observing if I if I was to not trade anything is better than being into a very uh, stressful situation or or getting into a market that puts you into tilt or takes you into a dimension where you're you know you're not actually aware now what you're doing you're just trying to trade and, and now you want to get out and you can't or you 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 can get out and you're just glad you got out that's the, that's not trading that's gambling so. Setups, 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 scalable setups, scale, 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 scale your business up. Okay. Learn how to scale your business in size. Where are the sizable setups? Trading every day is what, what they want you to do. Understand that they want you to trade as much as possible because they know long-term you're going to blow your account up or lose. You'll end up losing if you constantly are trying to trade, but if you're scaling the same setups over and over and over again and growing them in size. Guess what? They don't they don't count on anybody doing that. And trying to read price action and markup charts and everything else is not a setup. You should be able to go day one, day two, day three. Which one's in the day three setup today? Uh, several traders have asked again, how come I called Friday day one on Tuesday? Okay, I'm going to say this one more time. There's three day setups. If today's Wednesday, three days back from Wednesday is Monday. If it's Tuesday, three days back from Tuesday is Friday. If it's Monday, three days back from Monday is Thursday. And if the high of the week is Wednesday and Thursday's inside and it's Thursday, Monday, uh, sorry, Thursday, Friday, Monday for a Tuesday trade, well, there you go. It's still a three-day template, right? And we could have inside bar traders trapped, which we all often see at the end of a week. We go Friday, Monday, Thursday's an inside day. They reverse on a Tuesday, take out the low of the inside day. Think simple, think scalable, think low stress, Think high profits, think big money, uh, scalping with size and trying to get in and out, you'll end up blowing yourself up on the wrong day on the wrong instrument. And then you'll start doing other things that will really uh, do damage, not only to your 
financial account, your trading account, but possibly to your mental account as well. So have a great day, traders. Non-farm payrolls Friday, hump day. Resetting is a day one. I don't care if it moves later. I don't care what it's doing now. I'm going to uh, get on with my day. Have a great day, traders, and may the markets go with you.